वेलकम यू वॉचिंग एन डी टी वी द करोना वायरस पैंडेमिक इज अफेक्टेड आर लाइव आर इकोनॉमी आर हेल्थ एंड हैज स्प्रेड टू एवरी कॉर्नर ऑफ द ग्लोब द रैपिड स्प्रेड द न्यू वेरियंट ऑफ अर्स क्लूज एज टू हाउ सार्स कोविड टू इज अडेप्टिंग एंड हाउ द पैंडेमिक विल प्ले आउट ओवर द नेक्स्ट सेवरल मंथ वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज सेट दैट द हाईली म्यूटेटेड ओमिक्रॉन वेरियंट ऑफ कोविड कुड चेंज द कॉस ऑल टू द कॉस ऑफ द कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडेमिक Now due to the previous lockdown the work from home culture people's lifestyles have been severely disrupted many people have become physically inactive developed irregular eating patterns which has led to an unhealthier lifestyle and an aggravation of lifestyle related diseases a multi sectoral approach therefore is needed to promote healthier diets and increase physical activity this can help in slowing down the diabetes epidemic and heart diseases Beat diabetes myths and facts will impact and help a large number of people to prevent or control metabolic disorders. Today we have with us a panel of experts to share their advice with you. Dr. Basab Ghosh, uh, he is a diabetologist. Dr. Basab Basab's uh, diabetes care joining us from Agartala. We have Dr. G.N. Dubey, uh, GD Multi Speciality Clinic uh, joining us uh, from uh, Lehra Sarai. We have uh, Dr. Shri Devi Pala Dugu, uh, DM Endocrinology. She is an endocrinologist joining us from the Apollo Sugar Clinic in Hyderabad. Thank you, doctors, very much for being with us, uh, Dr. Pala Dugu. If I can begin by asking you, you know, Hello. through the spread of this new variant, which is faster than Delta, the number of hospitalizations so far continues to remain low. But there are experts who believe that the Omicron variant may eventually, uh, you know, eliminate Delta by acting. as a natural vaccine against it what's really the hypothesis around this uh thank you thank you for your question uh, this hypothesis i think was put forward by some of the virologists uh, wherein uh, omicron uh, variant which is supposedly less virulent uh, can act as a natural vaccine natural infection does provide some amount of immunity but vaccines are known to provide more long lasting immunity and uh, this hypothesis has been countered by certain other virologists who feel that uh, even omicron variant is something which we are not very much aware of and it is a new variant and how it is going to pan through we are not very sure so it would be harmful to implement this hypothesis in the sense especially in those who are having comorbidities and severe illnesses if uh, the regular protocols of uh, covid like social distancing and mask and masking are not followed then uh, this variant also can help uh, uh, spreading illness in the severely co comorbid patient and lead to deaths So as of now the recommendation is to follow all the covid protocols and take both the doses of vaccine and whether omicron variant is going to help as a natural vaccine or not we'll have to wait and watch All right it is a bit of a wait and watch as more research of course is conducted on the new variant meanwhile uh, Dr Ghosh what about wo vaccine booster doses how does it help to reinforce the body's immunity towards covid-19 and what really is the difference between a booster dose and a third dose of the vaccine if there is one yeah uh, good evening uh, regarding booster dose of a vaccine it's a supplementary dose followed by the regular dose of any immunizing agent for the complete population so scientifically it is used as an extra shot to extend the immunity provided by the regular vaccine and regarding your second question in covid-19 most of the vaccines require two shots to achieve the maximum immunity and in india we used covishield and covaxin and in both cases after giving the first dose immunity boosted up to 70% only so when you have given the second dose of covishield we attained around 95% and when <coughs> we have given uh, covaxin uh, it was little less around 80 85% but it is seen that uh, boosted uh, in india we have named the dose what we are uh, planning now is precaution dose because it seen that after 9 months both covishield and covaxin protection is declining so booster dose is very much required now 
but as it is given uh, the name precaution because it's not a whole population it is designed only for healthcare worker frontline worker and 60 year plus population with comorbidities at present and regarding your third question in response to your third question i would like to uh, say that uh, already explain what is booster dose because booster dose is for whole population but third dose is only for selected population here in covid-19 it is observed that after some vaccines immunity is not attained for uh, even after 28 week, uh, 28 days that is 4 weeks so 4 weeks one uh, uh, third dose is required and particularly for immunocompromised people so third dose at 4 weeks is given only to immunocompromised people to boost their immunity here i would like to mention one more thing out of a question that is immunity of two types actually one is antibody based humoral immunity and another is uh, cell mediated t cell and b cell mediated lymphocyte based immunity so and both are effective here actually mostly in media and uh, paper we are seeing uh, only about antibody it's not that uh, both are giving effective protection to all of us whoever is vaccinated so we must remember all vaccines are effective and i request through your media that do not hesitate for vaccine there is no contraindication please go for vaccination thank you right dr dube what about the omicron variant how does it affect kids and teenagers and are the current vaccines effective against uh, omicron uh, yeah, uh, yes uh, your first question omicron this is the new variant uh, after delta of sars cov2 uh, virus infection and this virus has uh, spread almost all countries of the world and the symptoms of this uh, omicron is the same as uh, the delta infections uh, like fever cough sore throat headache myalgia chilled body ache and uh, fatigue these are common symptoms but with less severity and uh, as far as teens and uh, kids are concerned the infectivity rate it is still ongoing research it is infecting same as in adults or in elderly the teen and kids are infected in the same way and uh, as far as uh, this uh, uh, the present vaccine they are preventing this omicron infection or not uh, who claims that the effectivity of the vaccines available right now these are uh, able to prevent the omicron infections as well and one uh, more important thing i would like to emphasize uh, that uh, the persons who are living with comorbid conditions like diabetes hypertension obesity ckd respiratory illness and uh, uh, cld patient and immunocompromised patients uh, they should take all the extra precautions already mentioned that is social distancing mask sanitization and uh, all they should take uh, special care if they get infected then the chance of severe diseases and uh, even uh, lead to death yeah. thank you Right. Uh, Dr. Paladugu, people are still unaware of the importance of regular blood sugar monitoring. They think that they'll get symptoms and indications if indeed the blood sugar rises. Can they also experience, uh, you know, a rise in blood sugar without any symptoms? Yes. <coughs> yes. Majority of patients with diabetes are asymptomatic. in the sense almost 90% of patients who have diabetes do not experience any symptoms and the classical symptoms that we uh, talk about uh, which include excess thirst excess urination excess hunger are seen in a very uh, small percentage of people and diabetes can be there for many many years without causing any symptoms and Uh, it so happens that patients are admitted with a comorbidity due to diabetes like a heart condition or a stroke or a kidney problem and then they are uh, diagnosed as having diabetes so it is not unusual to see patients with a complication of diabetes uh, presenting for the very first time as de novo diabetes so it is very important that every person especially in india more than 30 years of age does screen for diabetes yearly once at least 
एंड मोर सो इफ देर इज अ फैमिली हिस्ट्री ऑफ डायबिटीज और अ डायबिटीज रिलेटेड कॉम्प्लिकेशन देन दे शुड स्टार्ट स्क्रीनिंग एट अ यंगर एज and the other uh, issue is about obesity if there is a patient who is having overweight or obesity he should uh, screen for diabetes uh, at a younger age so it's not unusual to find patients having no symptoms at all and have diabetes for a long long duration right uh, dr ghosh uh what about you know diabetes neuropathy is a very serious condition uh, around 60 to 70% people with diabetes do have some form of neuropathy or nerve damage can uh, diabetic neuropathy be reversed it's a, a very good question actually established diabetic neuropathy is not reversible and also not curable but uh, progression of diabetic neuropathy can be halted and it's a very positive word i used it can be halted and also diabetic neuropathy as a whole preventable complication like any other microvascular complication of diabetes mellitus and it is possible only possible with plain treatment protocol i'll explain plain treatment protocol later on and diabetic neuropathy actually can be documented by uh, bpt we call it vibration perception test and 10 gram monofilament test vibration perception test value if it is 25 or more and monofilament test if 10 gram monofilament test is uh, sensation is uh, not protected it is not felt then both cases it is established diabetic neuropathy and in that case it is not reversible at all but it can be halted as i said but as i already mentioned this uh, with a planned treatment protocol it can be done and i'll explain this planned treatment protocol as a b c d e a stand for a1c that is uh, glycosylated hemoglobin last four months average blood sugar it should be around 7 then b stands for blood pressure for diabetic patient blood pressure should be less than 130 by 80 then c stands for cholesterol particularly ldl cholesterol should be 70 or less than that then d stands for di- diet diet should be balanced carbohydrate should be 50 to 50% of the total diet and f- uh, protein should be around 30 to 35% of the total diet and rest uh, 10 to 15% will be covered by the uh, uh, fat so diet and then e comes e stands for exercise and uh, daily exercising is very important and it is already recommended that uh, 30 minute brisk walking is good and at least 5 days a week is good that is 150 minutes per week is very very important and brisk walking we can uh, label for a general public that at least 10 kilo uh, 1 km in 10 minutes so say uh, one can uh, easily do that and that is enough so in 30 minutes 3 km is uh, mostly uh, good for any person as a brisk walking and as uh, i said already i repeat again that established diabetic neuropathy is reversible it is not reversible but progression of the disease can be halted with planned treatment protocol thank you all right uh, well dr dubey how do environmental pollutants affect the development and progression of type 2 diabetes mellitus or heart disease a very good question and uh, uh, this uh, deep condition and scenarios uh, most of us we talk about uh, diabetes uh, diet exercise oha and insulin none of us we talk about the quality of air that we breathe in recent publications in environmental health perspective and lancet planetary health this has been clearly shown the association of quality of air that we breathe uh, this uh, traffic air pollutants Uh, uh outdoor um, uh, traffic air pollutants tobacco smokes and uh, uh these nitrogen nitrogen oxides and uh, uh this particulate matter size less than 2.5 m they are clearly shown the association of insulin resistance that is important risk factor for development of uh, this diabetes and as well as uh, for the heart diseases as well a uh, few important risk factor air pollutants like carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxides this tobacco smokes and uh, particulate matter less than 2.5 micrometer these actually increases the pulmonary and circulatory oxidative stress and uh, it may change the rheological factor of the blood and uh, it promotes the thrombosis 
watching beat diabetes myths and facts uh, dr paladugu if i can come to you at the moment when you get diagnosed with diabetes there are several restrictions that come along with it can people with diabetes actively participate in outdoor sport for instance yes of course people with diabetes can participate in uh, outdoor activities in fact in type 2 diabetes uh, regular physical exercise Uh, whether it is in the form of a sport or uh, uh, in the form of uh, time spent in the gym uh, some form of physical activity is advised for at least half an hour to 45 minutes for those individuals who are having type uh, 1 diabetes uh, they also should indulge in moderate amount of exercise but before going for their regular exercise they should ensure that their blood glucose levels are normal or uh, take a small snack before they indulge in any moderate exercise uh, severe form of exercise uh, is better avoided in type 1 diabetic patients unless there is a regular monitoring type 2 diabetic patients should indulge in physical uh, activity every day All right so physical activity there is a must but what about diet dr ghosh doctors advise people with diabetes to have a low glycemic index food what is the glycemic index of food and why is it important for people to know about this oh yes uh, glycemic index the term that express quality of food in context of amount of glucose in it The term first actually introduced by David Jenkins in 1981, long back. The value of glycemic index is compared against the value of 100, and here 100 percent of standard of uh, 100 is determined by the standard of 100 percent of uh, pure glucose intake, where 100 percent would be immediately absorbed after taking that 100 percent of glucose. So that uh, uh, value is determined comparing with that 100 uh, glucose intake. so high value is 70 or more is uh, we call it high glycemic index and low is 55 or below and in between 56 to 69 is actually medium glycemic index diets we must remember the diet containing more fiber are having uh, less uh, glycemic index values so according to dash diet that is the study regarding uh, dietary approach to systemic hypertension ideal uh, that planning has given that one third of the a portion of the total diet should contain green leafy vegetable and fruits and here i mention regarding fruit that diabetic patient diet should contain good amount of fruits that 3 to 5% of the di- uh, calorie uh, total calorie should come from uh, fruits and for diabetic people citrus fruits are very good for their uh, diet regular diet and regarding a second question diet uh, education is very very important which is actually we are missing uh, not only diabetes in any sector any metabolic disease or any sector uh, doctor should discuss about diet for the patient uh, like uh, uh, glycemic index of banana is 51 but uh, commonly we believe that banana is a sweet fruit don't take it this are uh, all myths are going on 51 uh, glycemic index of banana if it is uh, gach pakna we call it in bengali if it is totally ripened then only it's 51 if it is a half ripened the glycemic index will be quite lower than 51 so uh, that sort of myth should not be there and that will only go if the doctor is intervening in diet uh, of uh, every patient what we are eating is uh, important but i believe what time we are eating is more important so everybody should have three major meal 
like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and three to four intermediate snacks uh, should be there in their daily uh, snacking. And here I uh, want to uh, like to mention that skipping breakfast is very dangerous, and it has been found as a high risk for obesity. And for any metabolic disease, skipping any meal is not at all good. So dietary advice, dietary discussion, that education should be there for every patient, every population. Thank you. All right. Uh, if we can just shift gears a bit, Dr. Dubey, can shortness of breath be a symptom of a heart attack or any type of heart complication? And what tests should a person regularly do, uh, you know, in this situation or to monitor this situation better? Hello. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Dr. Dubey, can you uh, hear me? Can you repeat your question? Yes, the question. Uh, yes, can you repeat your question? Yes, please? Dr. Dubey, the question was about uh, shortness of breath, and you know, could that perhaps be a symptom of any kind of heart-related complication? And what are the tests that one should really do in this situation? Yes, shortness of breath uh, uh, may be the one of the symptom of heart-related problem, and uh, although the shortness of breath may be the other. And maybe in the other diseases as well, like respiratory diseases, severe anemia, metabolic disorder, some neurological disorder in obese patient, and uh, as well as hyperventilatory syndrome. Although in heart attack, the most common symptom usually people know is the chest pain, but in a special population like diabetic patients and in elderly patient and uh, in female and chronic kidney disease patient, they may be uh, they may present with the shortness of breath only and other symptoms. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, shortness of breath may be the one symptom uh, in heart attack patient. And the common investigation that we can do in a patient of uh, this heart attack is ECG, echocardiography, chest X-ray, this biomarkers and coronary angiogram that can be done in patient of heart attack. Other special investigation also can be done, but these are the common investigation that we do in our clinic. Right. Uh, Dr. Paladugu, gestational diabetes increases the risk of type 2 diabetes, is, is that correct? Yes, uh, gestational diabetes does increase the risk of uh, type 2 diabetes. In fact, every woman suffering with type uh, with gestational diabetes should be made aware that she is at a lifelong increased risk of uh, type 2 diabetes. And in order to prevent or to diagnose it early, uh, post delivery, a OGTT should be done around four to six weeks post delivery, and. Uh, the patient is to be given effective counseling in terms of uh, dietary advice or in terms of physical activity. The advice would be that the patient loses all the weight gain during pregnancy by the end of uh, one year and indulges in some form of physical activity every day uh, and keeps a watch on her uh, dietary intake. Uh, if uh, the patient reverts back to the pre-pregnancy weight or if the patient can maintain an ideal BMI, uh, progression into type 2 diabetes can be avoided. Apart from this, breastfeeding is also known to protect against development of type 2 diabetes later on in life. So breastfeeding is something which should be encouraged and a subsequent pregnancy should be uh, uh, with uh, should be uh, done only with the healthcare professionals advice and uh, proper counseling as to in terms of contraception should also be provided to the pregnant lady so uh, the effective means of avoiding type 2 diabetes later on in life are to maintain an ideal bmi uh, encourage breastfeeding and also encourage gap between two pregnancies Thanks very much, uh, doctors, for joining us with all those important inputs. That's all the time we have on the show today.